Um, you know, we're talking about Interpol. Interpol was just given um, was given diplomatic immunity status inside of this country by an executive order that was just signed last week by President Obama. And an average citizen goes through, and we got to take our clothes off and get stripped and have your suitcase test for nuclear material and all yeah. this other crazy business. Um, I mean, this is obviously some type of, a, I think, like you're saying, there's a psychological effect to it on the mass population, mm -hmm. uh, trying to, you know, make them submit and, and turn them into basically a, you know, docile kind of sheep. Yeah, to be acclimated to outsourcing uh, your freedoms and to have complete dependence upon these authorities, uh, which is actually quite ridiculous. Uh, another question that we had for you today was, has anybody uh, actually presented or had any kind of response from anyone within the Obama administration, Obama himself, or, or Mr. Panetta? Mr. Panetta, yeah, head of the CIA. No, um, we are changed. A couple of group members handed the paper to the vice president, mm -hmm. and he hurriedly rushed off, and uh, one of the Secret Service guys gave a thumbs up or a salute to the activists who did oh, that that's good. and said, great job guys. <laughs> Those good people inside of the government and the military and the intelligence groups are who are uh, truly trying to protect the nation against the, uh, the other factions, we could say. <laughs> <laughs> they are the ones who are vigilant. They're the ones who are releasing these uh, you know, Department of Homeland Security reports. A rational approach would be to investigate truly, which I don't think Obama meant that when he asked for it. Uh, you know who who didn't get the name from the terror watch list to the no-fly list, and who was the desk person at the airport who listened to the guy in the suit and let the guy fly without a passport? Um, so that actually brings up an interesting point there um, about Obama. Why do you think that the Democrats and specifically the Obama administration are reluctant? to go forward with investigations. Uh, which all of this directly reflects on the Bush administration and possible culpability of members of its uh, staff and administration. Those who know what's going on see that this is a, a contrived opposition, false opposition, and whoever's in charge is doing the bidding of the top elites, the tiny, tiny sliver of humanity sure. that's, that's... They don't run everything, nobody could possibly run everything, but they keep things within the bounds they want things to go in. Uh, judge people by their behavior. Uh, yeah. doesn't even really matter why Obama's doing it. The fact is he's betrayed several key promises he made and we need to bring attention to that and, and <laughs> prepare people to tune out whatever rationalization he eventually comes up with because it, it isn't going to mean anything. All sure. that matters is results. Another aspect that's quite troubling about it is that Afghanistan is supposed to be the good war. And now we have, you know, an additional deployment of 30,000 troops, which is probably going to have, you know, twice as much potentially in civilian contractors is going to flood there. Yes. And that our government is actually paying, funding the Taliban to let us through with supplies. And they use that money in turn to fight us. Mm -hmm. And that the former disenfranchised opium warlords are now the people who have been taking over and they're part of the government now. And, I mean, they have a very, very rewarding... Mm -hmm. Um, future that's been created by this war and being put back in the power and now it's like what well, there's I've seen articles 2,000 percent increase in opium production mm -hmm. and the trucks with the chemicals that need the process and created into heroin and whatnot are being uh, waved aside just like the guy at the airport <laughs> through security so they could get in and have all this stuff processed yeah. and so I mean that's the good war I mean, if, if there was uh, another analysis done on 9-11 another investigation as Obama you know implied that he would be interested in having conducted and seeing the results of which, um, if that would happen, then this wouldn't be such a good war. Well, the whole, the whole apple cart of, of, you know, money laundering as the rule rather than the, than the exception sure. would just become, you know, it would sweep up so many people in it. That's why it's incredibly difficult to make any headway because everybody at the top is benefiting from things just the way they are. Mm -hmm. It's also a uh, very close in relation to the Vietnam War and what they have to call the Golden Triangle. Exactly. And I was a Colonel Bo Gritz, said from Burma to Bush, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They were sending the opium back, mm -hmm. the body bags. So, um, what do all of these revelations signify to you? Um, the you know increased security, the idea that uh, you know these attacks may have been uh, at least, at the very least, allowed to occur, if not uh, perpetrated or funded in some way and um, that they're using these things as lies, that there have been fake wars done uh, across the world, millions of people dead. I mean, what does all of this signify in, the, in a grand scheme to you? Or is there no grand scheme? Is there just separate incidents that are going along? 
In Naomi Wolf's words, it's the end of America. Uh -huh. I see it. Unless we stop it, people need to take seriously their responsibilities as citizens. Um, having to take the kids to soccer is not an excuse anymore. Uh, this is for your kids as well. Mm -hmm. but you need to step in and take action, yep. responsible action, based on good research and uh, solidarity with people of common interest. People need to connect the dots on their own and yes. not wait for things to be admitted. That's yes. just not going to work. Yeah, criminals aren't going to come out in front and say, oh, you know, by the way, we've been doing this to you for this all the whole time. <laughs> I'd like you to address, if you could, some work by some of the other uh, people, um, uh, scientists as well as uh, other intellectuals who have worked on this, um, specifically Stephen Jones's work as well as Richard Gage. You know, these guys are uh, heroes in the movement and with good reason. And, um, I'm happy to have worked extensively with Richard Gage in particular. Mm -hmm. I was honored by Jones by him allowing me to publish a commentary on his website, which has turned out to be one of the most popular pieces on his site, uh -huh. where I um, critiqued a radio interview between Dr. Jones and Leslie Robertson, who helped design the World Trade Center. So folks can find that on the homepage of the Journal of 9-11 Studies. Uh, Dr. Jones is also associated with Scholars for Truth and Justice 9-11, stj911.org. And, um, of course, Richard Gage is with Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. That website is ae911truth.org. And uh, we hope you'll visit those sites and educate yourselves. People can reach me through the, through the Architects and Engineers website, ae911truth.org. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us on our first episode of uh, Unstacking the Dead. Yeah, you uh, made a premiere. Thanks for helping me, and I'm uh, glad. <laughs> Thanks for having me, and I'm glad to help you out. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you very much for coming. To start our national news segment, we have a report here that came out from the White House, um, and they have said that the government, quote, had plenty of information to keep the alleged Christmas Day bombing suspect off an airplane. Uh, which, of course, we knew this was already the case. He'd come forward, he was on a watch list. Uh, his father had reported to the authorities overseas uh, what his son was up to. Uh, obviously, this guy uh, somehow got on this plane, and it hasn't been disclosed how. That's what really needs to be found out. How did he get on the plane? How did he get past the security? Indeed. We get right into that question and uh, potential answers. A Michigan couple, Kurt and Lori Haskell, uh, claimed to have seen the Nigerian terrorist suspect trying to board flight 253 without a passport. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy in a suit that came by and said, we do this all the time. Um, and it was referring to letting him on the plane. Um, it was speculated that he was being portrayed, you know, as a Sudanese refugee. Uh, uh -huh. Perhaps it was, you know, a good-hearted gesture or something like that. But whatever happened as a result, uh, he was ushered back behind the counter uh, with the man in the suit, and they must have spoke to some type of a supervisor. Um, they never saw the man in the suit again, um, but it turns out that he was on that flight without a passport, apparently. Yeah, I mean, I can't even travel to uh, to Mexico without a passport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was able to travel to Canada right before they made you do all that. Yeah, as well. But now, not anymore. You have to have a passport to go across the border, even. Yeah. Um, and in other news, um, the FBI actually questioned the Haskell family regarding what they saw with this man in the suit. Yeah. The FBI questioned them separately, um, and the wife was questioned for about 10 minutes on uh, showing photographs of suspects, and uh, one of which she recognized. Kurt Haskell was questioned for more than an hour. Uh, there's also the Dutch military police and uh, counterterrorism agencies investigating this. Another interesting aspect of this is they observed that a second person was taken into custody after arriving on a Detroit Metro Airport, and this person was not actually identified, but a U.S. Customs and Border Protection spokesperson, Ron Smith, confirmed that uh, there was a second person detained, and two other passengers have corroborated this story, but the FBI spokesperson, Bill Carter, uh, stated that the suspect was the only person arrested or charged in relation to the foil terror attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's um, interesting because those TSA documents that came out about a month ago or so, which revealed their procedures for allowing people onto planes or not allowing people, and the one that detailed how the CIA operates and gets people on the plane is exactly like that. It's not they just, just bypass, the plane complete, yeah, they just bypass. bypass the security and allow whoever they want mm -hmm. on.